Hey there, I'm Eric Menard. I'm an apps engineer with Festo up here in Canada. Welcome to this video. Today, we're going to have a look on how we can configure a Festo drive, the CMMT family, directly from the Siemens PLC. In this case, it's a S7 1500 series PLC. For the demonstration, I'll be using TIA version 16. And let's uh, get started. This is uh, this process has uh, two, two main elements. One is with our Festo Automation Suite, where we'll export the data that we'll use in TIA. So let's go over to the Festo Automation Suite. Right now, I currently have a project. We can see the drive, the motor, the axes, and mounting kit. Everything has been set up, commissioned. Everything is working perfectly. Then we save the project, and we can export it by going over to the back menu hitting export, going to Siemens DB. They remind us it's only a S7-1500. And here we have the list of the drives in my project. You can have more than one drive. But right now I only have one, so it's the Axis E X axes. So I'll just go ahead and export the file. That's how fast it is. And we're done for the export. Head on back. Uh, just so uh, a quick way to find the function blocks that you'll need in Siemens, the library, you can head over to the scan function, which is the um, magnifying glass, select the drive, head over to support, function blocks, and Siemens function blocks. Uh, it says point to point, but actually this library has uh, functions for the uh, MC motion um, also. So uh, it's a single library for either point to point operations or if you're using um, the MC motions. So you could go ahead, open that. If you see a cloud here, it's because it needs to be downloaded first. Like a, this is the cloud symbol. All right. Uh, another quick uh, feature that we can have um, is that we can also open up the device web page. So as you can see, there's no motor type, axis type. And in the primary parameterization, the port X19 is the port we'll use for Profinet, and it's currently at, all at zeros for the IP address. The port X18, which is our configuration port, is the one we see here. So until the drive is completely configured, if we need to do configuration, we'll need to use that X18 port. OK, so let's head back to FAS. Um, just to show you guys that uh, the drive is truly empty, let's try to connect to it. And as you can see, the drive contains no parameter data. So basically, we're in a factory default state. OK, let's go ahead and stay offline for now and head over to Siemens. So now in TIA, um, well, I already have a project set up with just a basic motion, basic function blocks. Uh, I am using the uh, technology object. Um, so as you can see here, I have my x-axis configured as a positioning um, axis. And uh, but first steps first, we'll need to uh, go ahead and um, import that file that contains all the drives parameters. So you'll open up the PLC, open up your um, external source file, double click to add, select the file we have just exported. It will have the same name as your um, Festo Automation Suite project. Now you, we can see it has been added into the project. Um, let me just open up my data block. Um, and I, just for the proper measure, I'll delete my um, DB9 pre from a previous test. So let's go ahead. To be able to use this file in the programming, we need to convert it into a data block. So let's just right click, generate blocks from source, hit OK, and give it a few seconds and it will generate that DB, um, DB9 with the name of the axis that we exported. In my case, it was axis X. OK, so that's completed. We see that the DB9 has been uh, has resurfaced in the program blocks. Now I need to modify my OB1 program. Um, I just did a quick, uh, I just threw together a few function blocks in the OB1. Normally, this should be better structured. Uh, don't judge me on that, but um, it was just to get something uh, working quickly. OK, so within the library that you'll download, there are documentation that will cover this. Let's just go over that real quick. Um, so the documentation, that was the, the, the beginning pages. We ha do have a good table of content that will enable you to find what you're looking for real fast. 
Um, but don't just go jumping directly into the uh, to the function block. The one we're looking at is the test of full param function block. There are some useful things in the uh, chapter three, how to configure the extended process data channel, exporting the TAIA source. So that's uh, what we just did previously, and also how to import it into the, um, it, there's a quick reminder how to input it back into the Siemens. Um, there's a, other tidbits, but all the documentation on how to use a function block will be here. So if we go into um, the uh, full param section, um, then we could figure out what everything is here. So basically what I've done is the first uh, blocks up until the timeout I've left at default. Let's head back to the Siemens to see that. So the connection ID, interface ID, DB size are left at default. If DB size is zero, it will transfer the entire DB. Uh, timeout is basic. Uh, timeout is just for the transfer. Um, you have to calculate about a 15 to 20 seconds for the complete transfer with the reboot of the drive. Um, the execute bit is the one that will initiate the transfer. And then we have the IP address for the X19 port of the drive. And here we'll go map that new uh, DB9 that was freshly created. Um, just a quick thought, when you double click on that, it creates a point because it thinks you it wants to get um, an additional element. But if you just put in the axis X and click somewhere else instead of doing enter, you'll get it set up properly. All right, so right now uh, let's compile this and download. All right, let's reinitialize everything. Okay, let's go online. As you can see, not I don't have green dots all across the board. Something is um, going on. So let's open up the device and networks. Uh, as you can see, I've got my CPU, I've got my drive, and that's basically it. They are linked up in the topology view also. And what's happening now is, uh, as you saw prior to this, I have no IP, I have no drive name. So let's go ahead, right click on the white portion of the, the drive and hit assign device name. We'll update the list. And this way we'll be able to update the IP address of the drive and the, uh, the drive name. We could select it here. All right, so give it a few seconds and we should see the, uh, the red lights turn green. There we go. So communication is set up. And um, if we double check in the FAS, we can now see that the IP address has been pushed, 192.168.4.30. Back, back to TIA. And if we go back to our function block, 192.168.4.30, it's a match, so we can go ahead and execute the function block. Um, to do this, I have created a small watch table, um, transfer full parameter. Let's open that up. And what we want to do is basically just click the execute. So let's move that on to true. The drive, the, the function blocks will be busy for a few seconds and it will turn to done before the drive actually reboots. So right now the drive is rebooting. Uh, that's why we have the error for the communication loss, we could go ahead and turn that off to false, and we're basically done with this uh, watch table. All right, so let's head on over to FAS. And if I go back to my info page, notice how now the drive motor type and axis type have been configured. So we have effectively pushed the configuration to the drive and I did not do any connections from Festo Automation Suite. Everything was done from the Siemens side. All right. So let's go ahead. Um, I have another force, uh, another um, watch table here. And basically, uh, if we look at the remaining of the uh, function blocks in the OB1, I basically put in uh, MC Power, MC Reset, MC, uh, sorry, Festo Homing AC4. This is a, a helper function block that comes from the library that enables to do the homing as configured in the drive. Um, and we have that uh, full uh, full parameterization. And then I have uh, just an MC move relative. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, go to that motion watch table. Turn on the uh, monitoring. I'll start by executing a reset. It is done. Let's turn that back off. And now I'll enable the power. 
So the power status is true. So we have the drive is enabled. Good thing. Uh, right now we can see the uh, actual position of the drive down here, 70, um, I believe it's 70 millimeters. So let's go ahead and do a homing. So I'll just turn toggle this to true. It is executing the homing. The homing is done. So let's toggle that false. And we can notice that the um, position uh, is back to zero. Let's go ahead and push these values I have prepared for the move relative. So I'll just modify now. So we'll be moving 11 millimeters uh, with uh, velocity of 20 millimeters per second and acceleration deceleration of 100 millimeters second square and a jerk of 500 millimeters second cube. So let's go ahead and toggle that to true. And notice that we have our motion and we are up to 11 meter, millimeters. Let's put that back to false. So there you have it, folks. Uh, we were able to export the configuration from Festo Automation Suite, import it into Siemens, push it to the drive once we have established its device name and IP address. And just after reset, we're able to control the drive directly from our program. So it's as simple as that. Thank you very much for watching and look out for more videos. Thank you. Bye-bye.